kick with his Facebook. Periscope jumps on quick. I haven't been on here so long. I didn't think you guys still had your notifications on. Um, good evening, Periscope. You know my motto, shout out, share. I have some thoughts. We've been at a season of consistent visitations. I don't think we've ever had this many visitations from heaven in our lives. Um, speaking of me and my wife, my wife and I, and um, the Lord has been speaking to us. And on yesterday, he finally, Tarasha, hello, Iota, hello on Facebook, Douglas, Miami, my King Jesus brother, bless you, sir. I don't think I've ever had this much clarity on the subject of Saul. I want to talk about Saul. Because Saul is the subject of heaven concerning my life in this season. Um, the Lord not only visited our lives, but he in interrupted the life of a complete stranger, complete stranger. And um, sent the same angel to his home that he has sent to our home. And how do we know? this was the same angel is because the description he gave of the angel was the same description that um, we had of this particular angel. We're very aware of the angelic hosts assigned to our ministry and we're very aware of Colossians chapter 3 that warns against a worship of angels. I know a lot of people jump to that when you start talking about angels a lot. Yeah, ministering angels are real, according to Hebrews chapter 1, verses 7 and verses 11, I believe. Uh, ministering spirits. And you're going to hear me say this time after time. I want you to shout out and share. And a lot of people uh, divert to, we're not supposed to worship angels when they hear us talk about angels a lot. And the only problem with that, first of all, is that we already know that. Um, second of all, we did not become aware of angels by looking for angels. We became aware of angels by being in the presence of Jesus. Um, so it was never about angels. It's just when the Lord shows up, he shows up with his entourage. It always happens. Genesis, look at Genesis 13. Look at the appearances. It was always the Lord, the Lord and two others. And, um, but anyhow, the third reason that that is um, just a diversion is because when Paul was talking to the church at Colossus, they had such a frequency of angelic activity that the necessity to deal with it became uh, a priority in the life of the Apostle Paul. In the American church, we have not reached that level yet. We had that level before, but for some reason, our preachers don't want the supernatural no more. They don't want the reality of heaven anymore. We want good ministry. And that's what leads me back to Saul and why it is a subject of heaven. Because when the angel, um, it's a prominent prophet, um, when the angel came to him, one thing the angel told him is that we would have to watch out for the spirit of Saul, that Saul would want us. Hey, babe. She's on Periscope. Um, so shout out and share if you're just joining this. I want more people sharing on Facebook. Matter of fact, share on both platforms. I'm not going to be on here long because I'm going to spend time with the people that I poured to in this season. On my Gloriology page, that's why I put the website in this post. Because up until July the 15th, um, because after that point, it'd be too late. 
will be a month in, but tomorrow on June the 15th, we begin a course called Gloryology, the study of glory. And um, I'm going to be pouring, pouring into them prop, uh, as a priority. So I'm going to jump off here in a minute and I'm going to start teaching on that platform. So if you're interested, all you have to do is click the link um, in the post once I'm done. And you have until July the 15th and registration will be closed for the summer. Um, so this may be your first time hearing me, but if you feel the Holy Ghost on it and you want to learn more things of spiritual nature, then that's a class that you want to be a part of. Okay. Um, so the angel told us that we, we, he really told Jeremiah, um, because when he left our house, he went to his house. And the next day, he had a whole Facebook post about it. He did not know me, but the angel gave him my first and last name. And I vetted him. I made sure that he had never heard of me before, and I believe him. Um, people were texting me. Apostle Ryan Lestrange texted me and said, did you see this post? And Apostle Alexander Pagani text me and say, did you see this post? And other people text me because I had never heard of this guy myself, but he's um, pretty respected, well-known in his stream. And um, when I finally spoke with him, I'm giving you the backdrop of the story. When I finally uh, spake with him um, and he described the angel, I knew it was the same angel that had been assigned to our lives as of February the 11th. There was an angel assigned to our life on February the 11th. We knew he was a high ranking angel. And um, <clears throat> if you don't like this, wait till we talk about our money angels because we have new money angels. I'm gonna make every religious preacher mad. We have new money angels. Yes, we do. We have new money angels and I don't care if you don't like it. Yeah. Learn to like it. But, um, <laughs> that is so hilarious. Um, mm. Don't y'all love these Selah moments on these broadcasts? It's like I want to say something. I have a whole lot to say, but. Okay, so the angel, and I knew what, and when I finally spake with Jeremiah, I said, you had this encounter between 2 and 3 a.m. And he said, yes. And I said, I know you're telling the truth because this angel left my house around this time. So if this is the same angel, this is the time this angel arrived at your house. But one of the messages, and I don't want to get off into that. Um, one of the messages was to watch out for Saul. And this is a very provocative message, but it is the reality. Um, a lot of people have lost. I'm starting to feel a very strong anointing come on me right now. Um, my body is starting to warm up. And um, if you can feel that out there, just do a fire emoji. If you're just joining me, I want you to shout out and share. You see it on me? My voice is kind of shaky. If you've been on here, if you can tell the difference in my voice right now. That's unusual, isn't it? I was talking straight and all of a sudden I'm trembling. May the fear of the Lord be your portion too. So... Don't get tired of me saying shout out and share. I'm on Periscope on Facebook. Don't get tired of me saying that. Okay. Um, and it's possible. You have to understand. The shift was evident. Awesome. You must understand the severity of what we're called to. The book of Romans even teaches that. Let me see if I can just find that really quick. I believe it's around Romans chapter 10. The severity of 
what we're called to. It is a holy calling. That's what, that's what the apostle Paul called it. He says it's a holy call. It is a holy call and it is not to be taken lightly. Now here we, now this is where we get into prophetic thoughts. So being that I know from heaven what I'm contending against, okay, in the spirit world is a spirit of Saul. And because I know that, yes, it's Romans chapter 11, verse 22. Now this is the New Testament for all you grace preachers. And we're all grace preachers, but some of us, any truth can be twisted. I'm not against grace. I'm against the way grace is portrayed in many of our churches. It was the Bible that the devil used to deceive with. He has never had any other basis of deception other than that which have already come out of the mouth of God. Starting with Eve, he said, have God said. He had to take the word that God had already spoken and he had to be a master at manipulation and twist that word. And hence, we have the grace, hyper grace revelation, where anything goes, anyone goes to heaven. You cannot lose your salvation. You cannot lose your salvation, but you can throw it away. Jesus died for everyone, but he gave us the conditions of us receiving the redemption of his death. And in fact, let me bust that demon because the gospel was never about Jesus dying for our sins. I'm going to make a lot of theolog theologians mad. That was the backdrop. That was what we need to understand. But that is foolishness. The cross is foolishness. Hush, Romans chapter 10 tells us we don't just believe that he died for our sins. We believe that he rose from the dead. That's a big difference. You see the different messages? You see, different, you can have a really cute, pretty evangelistic service with 100,000 people. If all you know is he died for my sins. And it can look like people get saved coming to your altar call. But until you preach the resurrection, that he is still alive, it's not a threat to us like it was. Well, still in third world countries it is because they confront power with power. And when you really show up with power, you make people with power nervous. The whole issue, Jesus was tried for espionage. He was tried for treason. He was killed for government crimes because Herod was nervous. Pilate was nervous. They wanted their throne. And when you start preaching this kingdom, and you start letting people know, yes, he died for our sins. But he didn't just die. He rose again. Jesus is right now in heaven. That's going to sound very weird to some of you that go to backslidden churches with pastors who want to use the pulpit to become popular. It's going to sound like foreign language, but I'm going to get you used to it now. I want you to grow accustomed to this. It's going to sound deep, but this is not deep. If this is deep to you, you are in a very scary place with God. This is beginners, foundations, ABC, one, two, three, what I'm about to say. It's going to sound real deep, though, because you don't hear it in church a lot. But Jesus is right now in heaven with a physical body, not a spiritual body. He is right now in heaven with a physical body. He got back in his body. And he ascended. Let me tell you what else is going to start. Deep. It's going to sound real deep. It's amazing how we Pentecostals, we skip all the way to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And we miss verse 3. He didn't just go to heaven. Acts chapter 1, verse 3. He hung out for 40 days in his resurrected body. Cooking, fish fries, meeting, walking through walls. 
And the Bible says he was performing infallible proofs. Could you imagine what in the world is an infallible proof? It, 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 was, it was beyond the woman with, with the issue of blood. I'm talking about post-resurrection. It wasn't just blind Bartimaeus kind of stuff. It was the kind of stuff where he was vanishing in thin air. He was disappearing in physical form. Mm -mm. I don't want to go too deep. He is in heaven with a physical body. He is the only person in heaven with a physical body who has died before. There are two other people in heaven with a physical body, but they have not died. Their names are Enoch and Elijah. Why am I saying this? Not to go off on a tangent. I'm saying this so you can understand how real the spiritual world is. The supernatural world is the substance. You see that? Hebrews 11. The supernatural world is the substance of things hoped for. The supernatural world is the evidence of things unseen. The spirit world is not intangible. Hebrews 11 and 3. By faith we know that the things that were created were not made by things which are physical. Well, were not created, were not made by things which are visible to the, na the naked eye. Everything physical was made by something more physical. We're not going to heaven to float on clouds. And we're not going to be bowing for all eternity saying worthy. There is life there. John chapter 14. In my father's house, there are many mansions. I can name 10 places in the New Testament that the Bible says in, is in heaven. There's going to be a place for us to eat. There's going to be a place for us to live. There's going to be a place... You said, we're going to eat in heaven? Yes. What well, do you think they were eating in the wilderness? Psalm 78. It says, men did eat angels' food. Come on, Elijah. What happened when he went into depression? In 1 Kings chapter 19. An angel came and made him a meal. And he went in the strength of that meat for 40 days. What kind of food do you eat one time on one day and you do not get hungry again for 40 days? That sounds like heavenly food to me. Heaven is so physical that when the angels came to visit Abraham, oh, I'm going so deep. I'm going back to the angel, but you got to believe in the supernatural if you're going to hear me talk about angels. When the Lord pre-incarnate, now there's no such thing as reincarnate. The pre-incarnate Christ came to visit Abraham, Abraham cooked him dinner. Heaven is so physical, the spiritual world is so physical, actually, I mean, Genesis chapter six, that when angels rebelled, they came and impregnated women. You mean, you, you, now, now what's wrong with you? Now y'all was mad, now I'm gonna go on deep end now. Y'all was mad at me when I was talking about Stoop Dog. and you understand that all these Illuminati uh, celebrities, these people still sleep with those kind of demons. How do you think they make covenants? How do you think they make? You see, America is so blind to the reality of what's happening in the supernatural. And that's why I need to deal with Saul. And that's why I'm a threat to Saul. Anyone that has a Saulless spirit will not like me. Because whenever you give up something precious and holy for fame, for popularity, for money, and for the ministry mafia to be in good, to go through doors. Listen, the next level of great ministry is not open doors. It's impacting streets. We need a whole lot of so-called apostles to hang up their ordinations. We, I want to see an apostle go. And I want to see one. In the middle of nowhere, raise up a church. Not get the next, not get the latest technology. Not form the ministry dream team. 
and launch a church with raw spiritual material. You go in a region, the kingdom is here. I've seen it before. I've done it before. I'm currently talking to the executive producers of a city. I'm not going to give you the name yet. Um, matter of fact, we were just in the Bronx and we announced, hey, the kingdom has invaded. We just dealt with principalities. And two miles down the street from the church, uh, the biggest drug bust three days later in recent history in the Bronx. They found chemicals for bomb making components. This is classified as terrorism, not just drugs, which is why the Holy Ghost spoke. It was a drug conspiracy. It was drugs involved, but it was also the making of bombs. And we prophesied against it. And we saw God bring it down in three days. That's what I'm talking about. And uh, right now I'm dealing with a major news station in a city. So when you have authority, you have jurisdiction in certain regions. When you have jurisdiction in certain regions, no one has to open the door for you. You go in. You have the key. I don't know why I'm saying this now, but there's some pastors you are like a sheep with no shepherd. There's some leaders, there are preachers, and you need to be a part of this gloriology class. I don't care what it takes for you, you and your leaders. Matter of fact, you need to click the link now, register, because if you don't have that level of kingdom, advancement, God on your life, ministry ain't going to work for you. It ain't going to work for you in the next hour. It ain't going to work for you. I'm sorry. It's not going to work. These devils eating these churches alive. These preachers practicing they preaching and, they, and preaching their sermons and witches sitting right there in their congregations. And when they get finished having church, the witch go pray on the altar and send more demons out to somebody else's house. This is some real deal stuff. And I wish, I wish a witch would. Will judge it by fire. You come out of your body, you'll stay out of your body. And when I say stuff like that, then I sound extreme. No, you'll stay out of your body. I don't care what the church people think. You try it. There are people watching me, you dabbling in and out. You have Christian, have voodoo. Try it. My mama told me, don't play with fire or you'll get burned. I sound extreme because... We are so behind. This is not extreme. This is kingdom kindergarten. This is low level stuff. You ain't even dealt with high level stuff like triangular powers. You ain't even dealt with levels of witchcraft. The Revelations talks about the depths of Satan. You ain't even heard of that stuff yet. You haven't even opened the treasures of the kingdom. Luke chapter 16, the true riches of the kingdom. We still preaching, uh, we're still preaching the spiritual gifts in the fivefold ministry. That's so 1980. There's a new pattern. We're still activating people in the gifts of the spirit. What's wrong with us? Witches are coming out of their body, astral projecting, levitating, and we still prophesying. I'm not saying that stuff is going to be done away with. I'm saying somebody got to be ready to go to the next level. When you face them prophets of Baal, you got to be able to call fire from heaven. Nobody care. No witch don't care about your ability to prophesy. No witch cares about your ability to call names and addresses and numbers and the word of knowledge. No witch cares about that. And if your miracles only work in a healing service, you are too low. I need your healing to work at the gas station. I need your healing to work in your neighborhood. I need your healing to work in the IC unit. See, y'all don't know that stuff. My ministry started preaching in the streets. All this stuff we see in the church, I know it's real. Because I saw it in the streets. I don't know why I keep fearing. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to someone's stuff. I'm talking to I'm talking to someone's spirit. I've seen it. I've seen demons walk up to me right downtown. I was in Seattle, Washington, preaching downtown Seattle, Washington on the streets with a bullhorn. Some of you preachers would never do that. You think this ain't about no microphone to me. I got the same power wherever I am. I got the same power on an airplane. You sit next to me, people don't like to sit next to me. <laughs> oh, 
okay, Lord, let me just move on. But if you're just watching this, shout out and share. So I just went on a long, so uh, I'm now talking to, that's what I was talking about, uh, a major news station in a particular city, the executive producers, um, to cover a story. And we will be the first story covered in that city. Now, this city is the capital of this state. It's ain't no backyard wilderness. So you got to deal with levels. See, Tyre and Sidon, Jesus rebuked them because they were larger cities. And he said, it would have been better for Sodom and Gomorrah. It would have been better for Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm going somewhere. No, it would have been better for, hold on. It will be, more, it'll be t more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in judgment than you. Because I did so many miracles here. In the big cities, I'm talking about the metropolitan areas. I'm talking about Dallas, Atlanta, L.A. We have this concept. If you look at it, see, you go in the backwoods or somewhere. See, John the Baptist started in the wilderness. Jesus brought it on out to Galilee. And the reason when we get to these Galilees, we start compromising with celebrities we start kissing Oprah's butt. We start, I said it, we start uh, sucking up to people who should be looking up to us. It's because we didn't start in the wilderness. You cannot start ministry in Galilee. If you start in Galilee, you will not have the power or the authority to deal with the demons there. So it's easy. People And people say that, they just... You know, people, they flaunt their, just because you, you, you got a revival in the middle of the wilderness, ain't nobody been to Brownsville. Brownsville still ain't on the map. And we had a powerful revival in Brown. I'm not minimizing that. The problem is we still celebrate revivals of the wilderness. Who goes to Lakeland? We had a powerful revival in Lakeland, Florida in 2008. But who goes to Lakeland? Lakeland still ain't on the map. We had a powerful revival in Mobile, Alabama. Mobile, Alabama still looked like Mobile, Alabama looked like when they were marching in Mobile. Mobile, Alabama streets still look like they looked when Martin Luther King was walking on, in Mobile, Alabama. Those are wilderness revivals. God is raising up some Canaan takers. Shantou my Felimista. Yeah. So Jesus rebuked, I'm, I'm going to help you, because we come up with these sad stories. First of all, we, we, we dance around these little kiddie pool revivals. And God bless them. Okay, help us, Father. Now y'all mad, because I talked about some of your heroes. I'm just saying what the Holy Ghost is saying. He's very provocative right now in his speech. Okay, I love every one of the revivals I just mentioned. But the point is, Azusa started in L.A., Hello. Then it went to Chicago. Hello. And before it was in L.A., Parham was in Houston. Hello. If you notice, the major city, I'm, I'm going somewhere. The major cities of America are the cities that once had revival. Houston had a revival. Chicago had a revival. Chicago's revival was so strong that they built a city right outside of it called Zion. Built, the revival was so strong, they built their own city in the suburb. Are you all hearing this? Are you understanding this? Are you hearing this? And Jesus rebuked time signing. He said, listen, it would have been more, it'll be more, more tolerable. He wasn't just flexing his muscle in the storefront church. That's what's happening to our mega ministries. A lot of them are powerful, but a lot of them don't possess the strength to take their city. You build a 2,000-seater church, 5,000-seater church in, in the middle of 
Atlanta, you're not a success. You're in the same boat as everybody else in the wilderness. But we have ministry idolatry. That's what we have. Because we don't want the power of God. We want the popularity of man. Are y'all hearing this? Are you following the parallels? I haven't even gotten back to the angel. Because I can't yet. That's the level of the church. I'm over explaining things you should be catching. I shouldn't need this many references. I'm not jumping. Where are you going with this? I'm going where the Holy Ghost takes us. That's what's wrong with us. How do we do it? You listen long enough to get the pattern. Jesus flexed his muscle in major cities. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about some little hut in the corner somewhere with, with a, with a 30,000 uh, 30, man population for the city. I'm talking about a capital of a whole state, a capital city of a whole of an entire state. And we're dealing with the new station executive producers right now. And we're going to be the first story that represents God prophetically concerning what he's doing in that city. I told, I, I was on three-way and this is someone I'm training. This is another reason you need to be in a training. But someone that I train is the one that's dealing with the news station. He brought me on as his advisor because that's what I told him to use. You know, we didn't see the word prophet or apostle. They were secular terms. They were not clergy terms. If I go and say I'm an apostle now, I just sound like I'm crazy. If you go say you an apostle and you were Peter, you were a threat because they knew what that meant. They knew what that meant because Alexander the Great established what an apostle was. So all those fivefold giftings, they were secular terms, which shows us why we don't understand the fivefold ministry because we keep trying to explain the fivefold ministry for church domination. I'm over you, you under me, you can't do this, prophets can only do that. Well, you're supposed to prophesy, but don't start a church. Well, you're supposed to teach, but don't work miracles. I can show you in the Bible where teachers work miracles, where prophets governed. And evangelists took cities. You cannot limit. I know that was like a, a, a brain freeze for some of you, a mind explosion, a light bulb come on for a lot of you. This is why you need to be sharing this. Y'all being a bit stingy with all this anointing. You need to be sharing this because some people are not going to hear this. You know why they're not going to hear this? Because God ain't saying it to some people. You know why God ain't saying it to some people? Because they don't have the ear for it. They have an ear for just enough to get you to slap your neighbor a high five. They have, a new, they have an ear just enough to get the people up. That's what preachers call it. Can you get the people up? They have an ear just enough to get butts in the seats. Can you believe that? That's actually a preacher's term for that. It's called B-I-S. Oh, I'm exposing it. Mm -hmm. It's called B-I-S. You know what that means? Butts in the seats. You know what you are? You're not an army. How dare we? You show up to some of these conferences, you're not an army. You are a butt in a seat. You show up to some of these conferences, you're not the, you're not a, you're not the call of God. You're not the chosen of heaven. You are a butt in a seat. Yeah. You know why? This is a threat. That's why you don't see this Bible. But you will mark the day. Mark the day. We will restore the day where it is weird to not walk in power. We will restore that day. Paul said, you ain't received the Holy Ghost since you believe. That was the question of Acts chapter 19. Have you received? Do you have the power? Are you living in the presence? Now is what car you drive, who your spiritual father, what church you go to, 
is the bigger church on the block. Who are they? I don't know your pastor. My pastor more popular than your pastor. No, have you received? Don't, don't go wasting our time. If you got saved just to go to heaven, you would have disappeared at the altar. Don't go, don't come over here. Don't come in the kingdom wasting our time. Have you received since you believe? Do you want the real thing? Are you playing church? Some of y'all playing church. You playing church. I'm sorry, I can't go further than that. You play in church. You know you got a Ouija board still in your house. You know you got a sex toy right, un right under your pillow. 16 years old with a sex toy. Let me just pull myself back on over here. So, um, we're dealing with a TV, a news um, station right now that's going to represent our story. And, and, and my disciple was, um, see, now y'all looking at me crazy. That's what Jesus said. He didn't say go make Christians. He said go make disciples. He said you go make disciples. So really every believer is supposed to be growing up to the place of maturing in God where they can teach somebody else. And bring somebody else in and win somebody else over. So yes, my one of my disciples, and that's what I'm training people to do. You you stick with me, you're gonna know how to get them in, you're gonna know how to get them filled, you're gonna know how to get them activated, you're gonna know how to get them empowered. I'm not raising up any. Right now, one of my disciples just met with the mayor of her city. And I, I gave her the exact things to tell the mayor. She's a prophetess. And uh, matter of fact, she's right on this thing. Matter of fact, both of the people that I'm talking about are right on this live session. You don't even know who they are. That's what's wrong with the church. You don't even know who's powerful among you. Just because they ain't got a household name, you think they ain't shaking cities? You will hear these people. You come under this level of training and this level of, 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 of equipping, you will shake something. I got two examples now. Two examples. Two examples. I got 30 of them coming, coming to my city tomorrow. They, they, two of them flying in from Jamaica. They, they're coming from New Jersey, New York, Chicago for two days of impartation. That's what I've been training them for. That's what I've been discipling them for. Not this church stuff. And, 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 and she gave him the word of the Lord. I just give you a clue. Well, I'm not going to even give you a clue. And this mayor today told her, I will do everything the Lord tells me to do through your mouth. And I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, so he didn't say those exact words. But she texted me and my wife today. Uh, we have all our closest disciples. It's eight of them. No, it's six of them. It's eight of us on the group text. We have all our closest disciples on the group text, so they text us updates, and they let us know what's going on. I mean, she's meeting with the Senate and the mayor, and they're talking about funds that they want her wisdom to allocate in the city. That's kingdom. And y'all simply wearing these Christian t-shirts, jockeying these people, Jockeying for recognition among these people who don't have recognition in heaven. And I get it. I can tell when someone's been in the spirit. That's one thing why people may not like me. I can tell when people been in the spirit or not. If you ain't been in the heavens, you don't. You don't rate. You don't even come on my radar as a preacher. You're not a preacher. You need to be a steward, or janitor somewhere. And you in a pulpit, trying to run God's house in a way that's profitable to your own cause. Okay, help us, Father. And, um, okay, let me open this back up. It started acting crazy. My iPad. Sorry. Okay, it's still acting crazy. But, um, yeah, so they're doing a whole, so the other disciple who's in this capital city, they're doing a, they're doing an entire if you're just joining this, I want you to shout out. I want you to share. I want you to share with people you know. But 
I feel this again. There's some pastors you need to sign up. There are pastors, apostles, evangelists, teachers. They're signed up for this Gloriology class because I'm doing something. I didn't just jump up wanting some new title. God has activated the apostolic in me now. It's been active. There's always been my primary calling. I've never been ordained as a prophet. I've only been ordained as an apostle. I don't know why I'm saying that now to validate that. I've never been ordained as a prophet. I have only been ordained. And um, uh, we're going to do a public ordination on our spiritual father. We'll do it um, soon here within the next year or so. Um, but yeah, that's my point. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The apostolic to raise people up and to send them. You're not finna sit on my second row for 30 years talking about you the head intercessor. I have people that have been with me just going on three years. That's all it took for the, the, the apostles with Jesus. They just three years and now the news media of the, this guy, the news media of his city is chasing him down and they want me to come back in. But I told them, they said, who is this guy? He's interesting. Because I told, I told them the word of the Lord and I told them how God was backing us up and that they are not to edit his story, to edit God out of it because there's a prophetic declaration and, they, and they're compliant. They're compliant. And these people are Christians. And when I was talking to him on the phone, um, I said, let me just break this down. I said, this is what's going on. This is what has happened. This is what God's doing in your city. This is what God is saying. I said, we want to make sure that you don't edit God out. And this guy, one of the executive producers, he said, um, well, you know, we, we keep God and journalism separate. I said, that's, that's your problem. I said, God is in everything. And I said, God is moving in your city. And that's what this story is about. You don't believe me? You'll see it on Facebook. Because we asked permission to even have the link of the full interview. And um, to post it on Facebook. Because one of my disciples right now, he's, he's get, he has a lot of attention in his city right now. I mean, sinners and saved people alike. And um, it's kind of going viral in his city. His name is everywhere. So the TV station can only cover so much. So we made an agreement with them that we have to be able to play the whole, the entire interview and use it to post it on our social media so if you don't believe me you'll hear about it I, I, I showed you the news report from New York we're not making up stuff I showed you the news report from Atlanta you saw the mayor the, the former mayor of Jackson Mississippi jump on my Facebook live trying to refute now if it was a lie why are you on my Facebook live why is the mayor of Jackson, Mississippi on my Facebook Live trying to refute me. Lions don't fight with hyenas and chihuahuas. They don't. So he validated just by jumping that I prophesied him out of his seat. If he wanted people not to believe me, he should have just stayed off my Facebook Live. <laughs> Amen. And plus, I did it publicly, so whether he said I lied or not, there were, there were too many people there who heard me publicly prophesy him out of office. And the way he would lose office and the news report. And it's, you can Google it and find it. But it sounds strange, again, because we like playing church. But we're not playing church over here. And uh, that's why I went into the whole spiel about Jesus. When he flexed his mantle, he didn't have lesser miracles because he was in America. You know, people say, well, we don't see miracles over here because 
We see them overseas. You know, you go overseas to see miracles. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. And um, I didn't finish what I was talking about, but I did say, and I did title this as prophetic thoughts, but I feel like I could just stop here. There's some people that need to sign up for this class. If you want to be a heavy hitter, if you're tired of playing games, if you're tired of saying that you're anointed, you never see the results of it. Now, it is very strict. My class is very strict. It is very militant. We hold you accountable. I will, I will, I told them the other day, I said, I will laugh at your joke and look through your soul. Because you, if you come in my sphere, we're serious about this. I don't know why this sounds like over the top. It only sounds over the top because I'm not like your preacher of choice. Like I'm not popular to you. Okay, that's, that's the only reason it sounds like over the top. If someone else was saying this, you'd be like, yeah, the kingdom is moving. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. God's about to raise up a remnant. Okay? You didn't hear me say nothing else. There's not an age limit to join. How do you join? Now, don't, now you make sure you read what we're teaching on the website. Let me give a disclaimer. I only want 120 people to 300. I have over 100 now. So at any random moment, I will close the registration. But it only took 120 people to birth revival. So I only want the people who are serious. And I'm saying that because we are strict. They get rebuked almost every other day. Almost every other day. H.R. Crump is one of the people. Don't y'all get Mason is one of the people. Mason, don't y'all get rebuked almost every other day? I'm calling out names from Facebook. Michelle, don't y'all get rebuked almost, and, and is in love. I don't lord over people. Jesus said, don't be like the Gentiles and lord over people. I don't lord, but I will guard the culture. I will tell you where you're wrong, and where you're off. I'm not going to speak more than training, because if you, and this is only to those who are called to it. If you're called to it, you fill the pool. And you can read everything you want to read about it. I'm not trying to solicit more people because we have kicked people out as well. So make sure you read it. Read up on it if you want it. If you want it, read up on it. And uh, you will feel the love of God. I mean, you will feel accepted. Some of them I haven't even taught yet. And just the community on the page. It's a private Facebook page uh, where we convene. And then um, those who continue the training, uh, we do trainings in my city. We even have sessions in our home. Um, and if a witch ever join my training and come to my house, you will know because they will fall dead in my house, I promise you. Um, that stuff sounds strange again. Y'all better be, you better understand it's a demon trying to kill y'all. See, I can say that stuff because y'all understand you don't, you, don't, you don't know the powers we've confronted and we've dealt with firsthand and they really are lethal and they want your head. They want you sleep enough to kill you. So I, I'm sorry that sound um, extreme. And I'm not, I'm not saying that for shock value. I mean every word I'm saying. And if you take part of this and you clip it and you throw it up on YouTube, there would be repercussions. So think, 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 think very, be very sober in your thoughts. Make sure you want to mess with the Holy Ghost when you do that. See, there, there are people who just don't know them, then they're enemies of God. They're enemies of the kingdom. Yeah, there are living people who, Herod in Acts chapter 12, he died. And a nonsense and suffice. See, that sounds extreme. Do I go around preaching the guy going to kill people? No. Do I curse people? No. I don't do that stuff. But it's, I know it sounds extreme because we're such on a low level. And you're wondering why you're praying and then getting results. There's an atmosphere that's been prayed over you. You know, you can be bound in a circle of failure by witchcraft. 
You get the right rich, pray the right prayer over you. And there's a circle in the spirit called failure that you're living in. And you think I'm extreme? What's extreme is you've gotten comfortable in the bondage. That's what's extreme, not me. I'm normal. I like roller coasters. I like hot dogs and nachos when I'm in the movie theater. I like, I love my daughters. Yes. And when they get old enough, I'm buying guns. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If someone ever treat them wrong, you will see this preacher in jail. And my angel just make him get me out. Because, yeah, I'm normal. But it sounds extreme because we play with this thing. We don't really want God. That's really the problem. We don't really want God. That's really the problem. Brandon, you ain't fighting now. You winning now. You winning now. Say it right. So there's some people. Okay, Holy Ghost, I will obey that. But there are some people. I'm going to say something before I end this. And then I'm going over to my Gloriology page. And I'm teaching for a minute on my Gloriology page. Um, for the people who want to sign up, all you have to do is click the link. You can read up about everything that you receive. Uh, it's hardcore, though. Okay? It's no joke. It's, it's high-level teaching. It's high-level teaching. We get into some stuff. You learn. You, you can read. And that's why I kick people off so quick. I'm not trying to get numbers. I'm trying to get fruit. I want people, faithful men. That's what Paul said. And trust this to faithful men. Give this to people who are ready. I'm going to find some people who are ready. I don't care if you're in Canada. I don't care where you are. I don't care who has overlooked you. I don't care how disqualified you think you are. Yeah. Yeah. But it's hardcore. I just keep warning you. It's hardcore. Because it ain't easy getting this. Y'all see all these clips of people falling down and stuff and the glory effortlessly touching people. It took me seven years to tap into the beginning of it. But I heard someone say a mentor shortens the distance. It shouldn't take you seven years. It took me seven years because people wouldn't teach me that. People wouldn't teach me that because most of the people I was around couldn't teach me that because they didn't even have it themselves. But I wanted God. I wanted more. And some of you want more. And it's taken me 17 years to compile teachings and a curriculum where you will learn the things of the spirit. You will learn the world of the spirit. You will know the spirit world. You will know God. Yeah, you will know the secrets of heaven. You will. You want to be used by God? So, and some of you only go so far. This is like a literal apostolic recruitment. The Lord spoke to me. He said the first function of his apostolic ministry was recruitment. He went to Peter, he moved in the prophetic and said, Peter, did you know Jesus got Peter's name by word of knowledge in John chapter one? No one introduced him to Peter. He just walked him and said, thou art Simon. Now that's word of knowledge. He didn't have no praise and worship. He didn't have nobody setting the atmosphere, no piano. Man walked up to a boat and said, thou art Simon. No wonder Peter followed him. I wonder if Peter followed him. I would have followed him too. And then went right after Peter and they took him to Nathaniel. They said, okay, I know. A man without gown. I saw you under the juniper tree before you came over here. Now see, the, the church stops at the prophetic. Then Jesus moves in the apostolic. He said, now follow me. Do you think the prophetic is something? you think the word knowledge is something? The word of wisdom you're going to see greater things in this. And that's when the angels came in. John chapter 50, verse 51. You're going to see the heavens open. You're going to see the angels assisting me in ministry constantly. Even Jesus had constant angelic assistance. Now, now, some of you are new on here, but that connects all the way back to when I first started. Jesus himself had the assistance of angels. That's what he meant in Luke chapter 8 when the centurion man said, I have servants and you don't have to come to my house. I know you got servants, Jesus. You can just speak a word because if you speak a word, your servants are going to do your word. 
because I am a man with authority and I have servants too. So Jesus, don't come to my house. Your servants can handle this. Just speak the word and I know your servants will do it. Y'all missing that. Did you just miss that? See, when you sleep and dead in the spirit, stuff like that go over your head. Your dead, lukewarm, religious self. If you still listen to the Canton spirituals, you religious, you dead. There's a new sound. I mean, the first thing God changed, I don't know why I just went off on that tangent. The first thing God changed before revival came was the sound. There came a sound first. You know, you know who's hooked into the move of God by the sound and by the language. You still listen to the quartet group. You are a dead religious nut. Some of these people that are trading in their anointing, singing on Snoop Dogg's album, you dead religious nut. You are a nutcase to be playing with the church, to be playing with this thing, to be halfway in. You want to figure out how much you can do to still go to heaven. You will bust hell wide open. And let me just get back to what I was saying. I'm going to set a cake on oh, Periscope. And uh, I don't know how I got off on the can of spirituals. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry and I'm sorry. I'm just, just giving you examples of you stuck in an old time zone. And God has moved on. And we wonder why. We wonder why we're not in the current moves of God. And stuff like this is like, what is he talking? Some people are still trying to figure me out. Like, what is, what is he, what authority, who does he think he is? Same thing they asked about Jesus. That's a compliment. When you show up out of nowhere without a bishop robe, a bishop ring, a bishop chain, without a Christian costume, and you go to a city and you literally seize it in the Holy Ghost, and you literally decide what principalities have to move out and what powers move in, and can't nobody track your ordination, can nobody track when you change from prophet to apostle? <laughs> Can't nobody track you in the spirit? You on some stuff. I just saw a pastor watching me through your um, one of your people's phones because you don't want your name to pop up on this screen. Yeah, you're a coward. Okay, let me move on. So, um, the, the thing, um, yeah, everyone comment coward, just comment coward with a fire emoji. That's what Jesus, Jesus said, go tell that fox, go tell that fox. When Herod sent spies and said, go tell that fox. So y'all scared on Facebook. Everybody on Periscope is doing it. Y'all scared. <laughs> and it ain't just one of them. One of you, you do it on the regular. You do it on the regular. One of you don't even have, you don't even use your, you, you use their password. And you just log in under their account. You account. Don't watch me for two years to try to decide if you want to bring me to your church. I ain't coming to your church. I don't want to go to your dead church. Because if you can see a move of God like this and hear stories like this, and you still want to see if it's politically correct to invite a move of God in your church, you'll never have a move of God. That's why your church is dead now. You don't want a move of God. And I'm not talking crazy to you. Heaven is talking crazy to you because you've locked God out of his own institution. Jesus said, woe to you Pharisees. You don't want the kingdom. You have the key to the kingdom. You won't go in the kingdom and you lock the door so no one else can go in. At least you can let somebody else go in. At least let your members get blessed. <sighs> oh, I forgot about boot camp in now. So the website for boot camp is officially up. In November. So there's two things you got to do. You need to get in this Gloriology. And you need to register for boot camp. Okay. Just real, just real fast. This, I'm telling you. 
this boot camp is gonna be crazy. It's going to is it's going to be like never before. It's the last one this year, November 9th and 10th. Go to Ferguson's Global Registration. I'll put that up later. Someone comment it so people can go to it later. Ferguson's Global Registration.com. We have four levels of it of, of registration. Come free. So you can't say that I charge you to get God. I don't care if you did anyway. Because who are you to say? Who, who, who are you to bring an indictment? But then we have preferred registration. You may want to do that because preferred registration gets you preferred seating. So when it's packed out, we have confirmed Dr. Cindy Trim. We have confirmed Psalmist Rain. We are confirming, we already have a, I can't say it yet, but you're going to wish you were there. So you want to get preferred because when all, you know, the people that just want to willy nilly. And one thing we do prefer, prefer seating is because when you pay for something, you don't just say you come in and not show up. Yeah. Boot camp always balances out. I'm going to finish my word in just a minute. Boot camp always balances out. We always have a couple of hundred people that say they come in and don't show up and we could have made room for other people. But the good thing gets is balance it out because they have people that just show up at the door. So if you show up at the door, if you register free, um, if you're going to pray, you get there early enough. But yeah, um, registration, preferred registration gets you preferred seating. It's like a normal registration for a conference. Okay. VIP registration gets you three additional exclusive sessions. So everybody who registers free, whatever you register, there are four services over two days for boot camp. If you want more than that, and some of you who've been boot camp VIP before, you know how it goes down. Um, I added more VIP sessions because of how powerful they are. We have three VIP sessions this time. So if you're a VIP, you're going to have uh, seven sessions in all. Then I have one more tier registration that's not open yet, but 12 people that are going to shadow me the entire boot camp. That's good for pastors, people who want to know the business, the business or the behind the scenes of ministry, what it takes to uh, put something together that of that magnitude. I have 12 people. I'll be pouring into you. It'll be like a personal discipleship. I'm only letting 12 people do that. You see the link up there now, but the link is not going to take you to a place where you can register. Only you, you can only register free, preferred, or VIP right now. The fourth level of registration, I'll let you know when that opens. I'm only taking 12 people. For two days, you'll shadow me. For two days. Yeah, okay. So, um, let me go back to Gloriology. And go back to what I was talking about. The Lord spoke to me. The, the reason we don't see this level is because we don't want it. Yeah, 12 people. And you better not be a troll interrupting me. Okay. Because you know how trolls do on Periscope. They say something to get your attention and they start talking crazy. Fire be on you tonight. Um, um, yeah, so mm, we don't want God. We don't want God. We don't want God. That's our problem. We want ministry. When your pursuit is ministry... When you get it, you become relaxed. And when you become relaxed, you begin to compromise because your pursuit was never Jesus. Your pursuit was ministry. God will let your name become great. He said, Abraham, I'll make your name great. You dangerous in the spirit? That's one of the best compliments I've heard. I like being dangerous in the spirit. We don't play games with devils. And what I'm trying to teach people through gloriology I'm not dangerous because I'm a celebrity. We're all supposed to be powerful. What is going to happen if everybody with the Holy Ghost got equipped? Stop doing all these sad, sorry activations. You train in church people how to be anointed in church context. That's played out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you don't like it. There it goes again. There it goes again. I picked up another pastor on my radar that got mad when I said that. And stop sending word back to these people who's sending you out, telling you to find out what's happening. 
You better stop that. What's on our life is holy, and it's getting more dangerous and dangerous to come around it, and you don't want it, and you have no intention of honoring it or respecting it. It's getting more and more dangerous. I know it ain't popular to say. It just is how it is. Okay? I want some people. I want some mayors. I want some... I want some politicians. I want some. I'm recruiting. I'm recruiting. I'm looking for people. Now, some of you, you just want to take a class. You can learn it and try to go hocus pocus something. You just want to see people fall out. You'll never get that. Some of you, you really want to be trained. You really want to be released. You really want to be accountable. That's where. Gloriology is where I, where I, is where I recruit. I just told you about the, the, the guy disciple. And now the whole city is about to hear the message of the kingdom through one of the primary news stations of that city. And I'm on three-way talking to the executive producers, planning it and strategizing it out. Another disciple, the mayor, a senator, and the county commissioner, she has the ear of all three of them. At least three times they took her to lunch in the last, in the last month. And she's about to be a millionaire. I don't know if I told y'all that. Yeah. Something is coming down the pipe. You come around this, you'll see it. I'll I put the video on Instagram just so everybody see it, okay? When she get that check, mm-hmm, that good check, mm-hmm. Y'all saw the other testimony I told the pastor. I said, God is about to do something in your church, and your building is going to be refinanced. This happened so quick. I showed you the video. Those of you who signed up for my emails, I sent you the video. The pastor saying it himself. I may put that on social media too. But it was for my partners. I sent that to all my partners. If you're not a partner, then sign up to be a partner. And uh, Gloriology, here I come. Um, Gloriology. If someone said, we're from the hood, we're dying and need your prayer. You don't need my prayer. That's what, the, that's what a weak church have told you. But the Bible says, if any man be afflicted, let him pray. You, that's, that, that, these are the kind of people. Somebody just come in and said, we're from the hood, we're dying and we need your help. No, I'm not your hero. Now, I can activate the hero in you. But see, most people want a handout. They don't want heaven. I can show you how to shake your neighborhood. That's the context that I'm talking in. Because I'm not in these cities with these other people. But they've submitted to this training. They've come around this fire. And now the same type of testimonies y'all hear me saying, now they are doing it. In less than three years, they are now doing it. But people don't want to pay the price for that. Gloriology will show you if you're ready or not. It will show you. Tell me you want to be used by God. You don't want to be used by God. You want to be a Christian celebrity. That's what you want. Most people that say they want to be used by God, they want to be Christian celebrities. Being used by God meant that you were ready to die for this. Yeah. <sighs> no, I'm not coming to Maryland. You come to Atlanta. You know, when people start seeing the anointing, the first thing they say, are you coming? Are you coming? You're coming to New York? No, come to Atlanta. Come to Atlanta November 9th and 10th. The move of God is not coming at, at your convenience. You don't have to explain it. I get you. I'm just using you as an example. The move of God is not going to come at your convenience. Gloriology is online. Yes. 
of Gloriology evolves to being an in-person training. That's where I pick the people who come um, and I train them personally. I train small groups of people. I have 30 people coming tomorrow to be trained. But they started online. Because you gotta, you gotta, we gotta see if you're ready. We gotta see if you're ready. So, um, I don't know why I keep going back to that. You need to, you're coming to Atlanta, Demetrius. Good. I wanna see you. I wanna see Joseph. He said, full apostolic boldness tonight. It's funny because it's, you know, it's funny because you saying it, but I know you're serious, but I don't, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. Did you know that, Joseph? I didn't tell you that. These, some of these disciples that were coming to these boot camps, they shaking cities now. See, it sounds, see, that's what I want to show people. That's apostolic. That's what I'm trying to say. This is what the apostolic is. I'm not up here just flexing these muscles to impress you. I'm showing you what's possible. When I prophesy in the city and it come to pass and you see what I prophesy in the news media, now you seeing people who have been trained under me do the same thing. Do you want that? Or do you want to be in some Christian country club? That's what I'm asking you. If, you're, if you want to see more of God, more of the demonstration of the power of God, then I, I, must, I ain't never said this. I'm going to say it like this. We, your tribe. Some of y'all in the wrong tribe. You got the, you mixed in with the Hittites and, and the Jebusites. And you mixed into the, you mixed all up in different camps. You mixed breeding, cross breeding. Because it's popular to be in that tribe. No. If you want to do the stuff. And I will tell you honestly why you ain't doing it. I will tell you, you're prideful. You're arrogant. You think you know everything. You're trying to prove a point. You want to be a star. You're disobedient. I'll tell you. And you'll feel so much love and acceptance, even when I rebuke you. I mean, you'll see. I don't care who you are. I don't care what church made you the janitor. Because they didn't see a context for your gift. That's what people do. Powerless churches, context, gifts wrong. And that's why we still doing these gifts of the Spirit teaching. And we're only trained to keep a high lay hands on the next people. No, I want to see your healing work at the school you work at. I want to see your deliverance work. I'm training school, a school teacher right now. Let's say that power to hit the, the whole classroom. She know how to pray in tongues when, the, when they act like little hellions. And it'll shift the whole atmosphere. And some pastors can't get an ounce of oil in the whole church building out of a two-hour service and got a school teacher. They got demon babies. <laughs> Y'all don't like that. I'm just, the, the babies ain't demons. I'm just saying, they got these generational curses and they bloodline and that's why they acting crazy yes yeah, it's, it's a curse at work and know how to shift the whole classroom know how to shift the atmosphere of a whole classroom do you want that or what and i didn't finish everything i was going to talk about with the angel and with saul but that's what it boils down to i was going to show you in uh first corinthians i said first corinthians First Samuel chapter 7. I was going to show you some things in there. I was going to show you some things in First Samuel chapter 28 verse 6. When Saul lost the anointing, it says God did not answer him anymore. God didn't even speak to him no more. First Samuel 28 and 6. And that's really what vexes Saul. That's what causes him to lose sleep at night. He lost his touch with God. And many people have lost their touch with God because they only used the anointing to make it in church. And when they got there, they became relaxed. When they got there, they gloated in their mega ministry. When they got there, they stopped seeking God. When they got there, prayer wasn't as important as it was when they first started off. God stopped answering. God stopped answering. So I just give you that. So 
people who watched the entire video, the replay, they won't think I was just jumping on tangents. And we said what the Holy Ghost wanted to say tonight. Yeah. We said we wanted to say tonight. We have to stay in love with our first love. Now that'll preach. And that'll preach. We have to stay in love with our first love. Did y'all hear the preacher? Did y'all hear Joseph? A lot of y'all know Joseph. He was at the boot camp. He's on Facebook right now. If you hear any, you know, all the boot camp, Joseph is on both the boot camp albums. So if you love his singing, he's a preacher too. But that'll preach if you stay in love with your first love. You have to stay in love with your first love. Yeah. I know this intimidates people. I'm not looking for membership. I I know pastors get nervous and listen, just let me borrow them for a year. I'll send them back to your church. I'm not looking for members. I'm looking for warriors. Yeah. So go to that Gloriology link. Um, if you're on Periscope, then you may need to come over to my Facebook and um, click on the link, or you can search the link. It's Jonathan Ferguson. It's my first and last name, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N-F-E-R-G-U-S-O-N, and then E-N-T, which is short for enterprises.com forward slash Gloriology. If you don't forward slash Gloriology at the dot com, you won't find it. Because it's not a full, it's not a website. It's linked to a website. And it's just a page that people can access when I give them the link to. So that's the link. If you don't, if you can't remember that, um, just come on over to Facebook and click on the link that's posted in my status. Now, the people in Gloriology, they're hungry right now because I've stirred them just like I've stirred you. But there's only so much you can do. Uh, there's only so many deep places you can touch in public ministry um, to the masses. The masses only go so far in the miracles. Uh, so there is a wisdom why we've become backslidden in our way of ministry because it's true the masses can only go so far in the miracles. But we should let people who are advanced in the supernatural decide how far they go and stop watering it down. That's the only problem. So there is a wisdom you haven't even touched the surface. Whatever I said tonight, you needed to hear it. If this was too much for you, then you don't need to be a gloriology. If this has stirred you up and you wish I'd keep talking, then you need to be a Gloriology. Okay? Because now the majority of the people, you've gone as far as you can go. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that. It's just maybe the level. There's nothing wrong with your level if it's your level. Now, you still um, peeing, having accidents in the bed at night, and you're five years old. Now, now you, maybe every now and then, every blue moon, you know. But it's a problem if it's repetitive. You, some, In other words, some stuff you, you want to grow out of. So I'm not comparing people's levels. No gifts are greater than other gifts. When I talk about power and I, and I get real strong about it, you know, hey, every gift is, has its due respect and its due honor. Every gift. Whether it's miracles or supernatural or not, every gift. Now, you know, but it's just, you know, there's only so much supernatural you can't be with the Holy Ghost. That's the thing. And if you got the Holy Ghost, you're supernatural. It may not be my kind of supernatural, but you're supernatural. Okay? So, I'm not bashing anyone's level. I'm bashing, I do bash by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, people's unwillingness to go to the next level. Then it's sin. You're not going to hold the whole church back because you want to become comfortable in your flesh. Okay, so I respect every ministry. Don't, I don't want you leaving my 
live stream and now you think ain't nobody anointed. Listen, Joyce Meyer is anointed. I mean, think of some people that most Pentecostals don't. Want. We need to, you know, mo the, let me just say this before I get off. Some of the best thing that Pentecostals to do, you need to watch some of them people that you don't think is anointed. You don't heard too much screaming. You heard, you have heard too much screaming for the dead ain't to be raised yet. Some Roman all that screaming and you ain't raised nobody from the dead. Some Roman all that preaching and you ain't getting cancer out of people's body. Some wrong with that. What we need to do, we need to go listen to some Joyce Meyer, some Jimmy Evans. We need to go listen to some, who else can we listen to? Some uh, Christine Kane. You need to get some balance because you can think you Pentecostal, you're really just churchy. Okay? So, um, amen. I said all that to say, everybody has their own sphere of anointing, their different gifts, same spirit. One body, many members. This is my message to the body. So it balances in, all right? The reason I'm amplifying the voice of this now is because we need more of this balanced in or we're going to die. The church won't last if we don't see a revival of the supernatural. Ain't nobody going to just be coming to church. Just to come to church. I don't even like going to half these churches. Ain't nobody finna go waste their time. Help us, Father. So, uh, huh. yeah, Jimmy Evans from Marriage Today. Powerful ministry. Um, powerful ministry. But let me get off here. Okay, Periscope. I'm, I'm going to stay on Facebook for two more minutes. I'm hanging up with you. And uh, you can come find the link over here on Facebook. You may want to jump over here in case I start prophesying for 10 more minutes. But I'm hanging up now. I love you guys. If you don't have a Facebook account, get you one. You have about two minutes to create a Facebook account. All you need is an email and a password. You don't even need a picture yet. Go ahead and create you an account. Jump over here because I'm hanging up. Love you guys. See you next time. Share the replay, retweet on Twitter. Share with your followers real quick right before you get off here. Okay, go ahead. Share with your followers. Do it. Share with all your followers. Yeah, I'm sharing with all your followers yet. I always say I won't be before. I have a Baptist spirit in that right. I always say I'm not going to be alone. I need to stop saying it, don't I? Yeah. So share, retweet on Twitter. You can retweet the replay as well because I'm jumping off here. Okay, I'll see y'all later.